You are asked to identify new lifestyles and new forms of language in order to proclaim the love of the Crucified One, thus giving witness to the heart of your identity. The implementation of our missionary calling will require a sincere effort of internal renewal on your part, which derives from your personal relationship with the Crucified Risen One. In a good community or a healthy family, you can breathe easily because you feel welcomed, uh, you feel affirmed, you feel you feel accepted. But for that to happen, people have to have time for one another. Um, there has to be, you know, what I would call, you know, presence and availability as a way of saying it's important that we build this, that we that we cultivate it. If 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 that's missing, I think whether it's family or community, very quickly you become cordial strangers to one another. Um, so I think that community has to be, it requires a commitment, it, re, it requires time, but when we invest in it, it brings us more fully to life. It, it, it brings a sense of happiness. And when I think back to Passionist community, at its best, people had that time, you know, that presence, that availability for one another. Uh, I think all of you uh, know my situation. Uh, I live in a two room apartment. Uh, we stay in touch, have a drink once in a while and uh, just talk. But uh, I'll be honest with you, it's been, uh, it's been a real challenge. It's a 25 minute commute uh, between uh, the monastery and where we stay. I, I want to distinguish between community as we've known it and community as we're inevitably experiencing it today. I always loved community because I love being with my brothers in community. Uh, I live in a community of three people realistically. Um, and we're glad when Alex gets over here. Uh, what I would like to see is uh, that we can form communities of, of, of a number of us, uh, passionist, religious. Ten would be great, but we can't put the whole province in one place. <laughs> we have to do less. But uh, personally, I find three to be, uh, much less Alex. I just can't imagine what that's going on like. But three is almost too few. It gets much better with five. Uh, uh, and I haven't lived in a community of more than five in a number of years. And I could sit and talk about the glories and the joys and everything else of community. But the reality is uh, we're transitioning. And I look forward to October when our vowed members get together to talk honestly about our experience. We're aging. Uh, we're dying um, and and that's not a bad thing at all uh, i was just in louisville and they have a very fine loving presence to one another um, so i just think right now community is going to mean something different uh, we have to collaborate with other non-vowed passionists to assist us in our daily life uh, in ministry and in our homes. Uh, we're no longer just this vowed community that's kind of going along its way. So I'm not quite sure in the future, you know, the younger guys, we need to talk to them. There are conditions taking place and like Nicholas is basically doing like three jobs. He's doing the retreat director's job, what Rowan used to do and then what Anthony Curto did. So, you know, you can only stretch yourself so far. So I'm not quite sure where we're going. You know, when I first came to Detroit in 82, and things were changing then, uh, the monastery was diminishing. Uh, there were still those who could be active who were. And I used to walk through the neighborhood 
And I would hear stories about how the neighborhood was this place full of families with children and the school was just full and the nuns were in the convent. And, and I began to realize that it would never be like that again. And that we wouldn't have all these priests going out to 30 different parishes and we wouldn't have 10 priest retreats here a year with 80 priests on each retreat. And that was going down. But I began to realize in a very personal way that that's what the Lord was asking of me. And there was a reason why I was where I was to live in a way that was different than those who had come before me lived. And I knew it would never be the same. Uh, I got out to Sierra Madre and I, uh, the monastery was not just closed, but being raised. I, I get back here and even the, the beautiful home we built next door as a mini monastery was too big for us. And all the way through it was the miracle. And the miracle was that the Lord was still asking me and asking all of us to keep being true to who we were, being loving to one another, whatever way we could. And that's part of the miracle uh, because the resurrection awaits. And it's okay that we're sharing in the passion as we are because we're living in gratitude for all the blessings we've known whether it was the heyday years or, or whatever it might be, we're all part of that miracle and we're doing what the Lord has asked us to do. And I think uh, the transition is leading us to something new and, and the Lord knows what he's about. And, and so we're passionists. Uh, we're passionists by vow and we're passionists by faith. And, uh, I know it's going to be, if we just keep being true to ourselves and the roots that are in us, it's going to be fine wherever that leads us. Loving God, our founder, St. Paul of the Cross, exhorted his companions and others to die to what is not you. As we wonder at the love of Jesus on the cross, Grant us the grace to die to what holds us back from following him. Amen. For a charism to endure over time, it is necessary to adapt it to new needs, keeping alive the creative power of its beginnings. I think um, in terms of uh, my, my needs as a, as a 78 year old guy, um, is intentionality people i know who want to get together uh, last night i met with uh, 12 people with whom i work uh, we meet every first tuesday of the month for faith sharing and uh what's going on in our work it's intentionality uh and and i find that so sustaining I want to live with people who have the same similar values, uh, who want to pray together, want to be together, want to eat together as much as possible, as much as the ministry allows, but to, uh, to recognize that, uh, that being together and where they are living is their home. And uh, they are willing <laughs> to, to create space for one another. The community has to play a central role in terms of, of uh, giving us a helping us develop a common vision and supporting each other in the works we do and the struggles we have. 
I also think there's an, another element to that. Um, like with family, your family, even when you're apart. So with the passionists, they would be part of the community if they went to Japan on a mission. And I think that um, the laity have to have to realize that too, that um, people go off and do another thing and get involved in a different job and, and the commitment isn't strong, but when they come home, they're a family. And I think that there, there's kind of that, um, while the commitment and involvement is important, I think there has to be a way of, of also saying that you're, um, that you're part of that without being present. When we were students, we, there were some of our students, some of my class at least, were looking for more faith sharing within, within community life. And uh, that wasn't really well received with some of the older guys. They weren't there for faith sharing. They were there for living the rule and doing their ministries. Um, that has changed. I, I see more people saying that we're nurtured by being together. We're nurtured by faith sharing. It's important that uh, the communities that I'm part of play together. Uh, so much of uh, community that I've been involved with is all about work. And I'm retired. I'm done with work. Uh, not truly, but I think uh, play has been the, the real life-giving thing in the community. I think we need to balance out the needs of each individual. Some are more gravitating toward community get-togethers and life, others more toward solitude and ministry. And perhaps we can, as we go forward as a province, have a combination of those type communities where some are larger, some are smaller. When I was on the board at, at uh, St. Paul Across Retreat House in Detroit, uh, the new administrator that came in said to me, um, what do I do when um, one of the board members' wives dies or, or one of our you know, big donors would die or be very ill and we'd want to ask for prayers? Who, how do I communicate that or where do I send it? I said, I really don't know. You know and I, and that, that question has kind of nagged me for a while. You know, I know we have a good pipeline informally but I, I guess what I'm saying is we might want to think about a more formal um, communication among the lay passionists. I think a lot of it has to do with the support and just being willing to, to share with each other. Um, when I was in Birmingham the first time it was just uh, Bob Crossmeyer and myself for a good part of that time. It was good community for me because you know I was just in a kind of a different new situation. He let me vent a lot, <laughs> but we support each other. I mean, one advantage was we had similar ministry. We were both in parishes, so we were able to empathize with each other or something about what was going on in our ministry as well. But, um, you know, we had our moments too. So I guess to me, it's, it, it, it relies a lot on sharing and um, and support. There were just the two of us, so I've lived in small communities for a good part of my vowed life. So the numbers not necessarily mean much to me. I think uh, diversity is really important for me. You don't have to be a single male to be part of this communion, the community. We got all sorts of people. Loving God, on Holy Saturday, Jesus lay in the tomb, having undergone his passion, and not yet entering his resurrection. Give us the courage to bear the cross of being in between. Help us trust that you will lead us from death into resurrection, even though we may not fully know what is in store for us. Amen.
nuestra misión está integralmente conectada con nuestra vida en comunidad. Nuestra vida comunitaria y nuestra misión no pueden separarse. Son dos caras de una misma moneda. Quienes somos y qué hacemos está interconectado e interrelacionado. Nuestra actividad apostólica es una expresión de la vida comunitaria. Now, it's interesting, a number of years ago, we had a guy from Indonesia and one from Kenya. And they were studying in, in Chicago. One was at Loyola on the lake and one downtown. Loyola, uh, uh, and it was interesting to see them when we had a general chapter. They knew more people than I did because of the melding of people, you know, across the congregation. For me, basic to this whole thing is, is people of faith, you know, and faith that be, can be shared. And for us, faith is, is focused in the passion is charism. So in that sense, I think in many of our local communities right now, there's been kind of a, an expansion here in Houston. Uh, we have people who join us for, for morning prayer and Eucharist, not every day, but most days, uh, which, is, which has been good. And uh, we each do our best, uh, the vowed members do our best, but I, I just think we've we got a, a different, um, different picture is going to it continues to evolve for us you know it, it reminds me of uh, you know the process of becoming close to somebody you start as an acquaintance somebody you might see at a bus stop or something you say hi and then you move through friendship to maybe something intimate even and as you do that there's these natural traits that happen like a certain amount of commitment um you know whether it's formal or not as you get to be friends or even closer you expect each other to be there uh, i'm really in, encouraged by the the recent you know the province assembly and that the passionist way document came from lay the lay people really you know uh, the lay uh, members of the family And I think there's a sharing of the values right there. There's a, a dynamism. There's the, the different values that are put in the, into the document. And again, it's, it's a piece of paper, but it's meant to be lived. So to me, community means kind of taking those, those values and letting them come alive uh, in us. And, and the, the challenge is, of course, yeah, we've got, we've got more than enough rooms, you know. And yet I think we can, maybe we can, you know, look down the road a bit and, and have some more people join with us, at least maybe on a, on a, on a commitment basis down the road, but it's got to be faith related. Otherwise it's just a, it's a, it's a motel, you know, and that's, that's not us at all. One of the things that I've seen here in Louisville is when we have our Monday morning breakfast, we play a lot. I mean, we are constantly teasing back and forth, but we're also sharing things about our family, asking each other how we are. And it's not just a lay thing. I mean, every week, uh, two or three, you know, uh, people from the monastery who are vowed show up and, and we have a great time. There is a lot of play, Dan. And uh, at the same time, an intimacy develops uh, where, you know, if something happens to one, the others respond very strongly. I experienced that totally when uh, my wife, Mary Rita, died last year. And uh, it just is overwhelmingly uh good intimate and community building probably my my best experience of community was when i was at, at agnes and it wasn't with the with the vowed passionist it was with uh, the particular ministry team that we had at the parish we would be eating together three four nights of the week we always gather and rally for rcia and a couple other events um uh, There was there was this energy that we were doing something together. We were praying together. We even started uh, evenings of through Lent and um, Advent for for uh, evening vespers and allowed people to plug in before they went home or other people from the parish to come. So for me, community is something that's that's never static. It's always dynamic. It's always shifting. It's always moving. 
I love the fact that we're including laity, both in ministry and in our communal life in some ways, inviting them to mass, uh, socializing. Community is a, a vital part of my life. But there are different blends or strands or, or uh, facets of community that each person goes toward. And I think we need to honor that as we get down to a few men and strive to make, make it the best for all. Those of us working with passionists all this time, you, you're just a part of it. It's passionist community. <laughs> you become a passionist. In Birmingham, uh... It used to be the separate parishes, and then there was the diocesan parish, and they filled in the pool instead of integrate the pool. And the Hispanic folks had to like find a parish, and now we've got that place, so we're getting help from like other provinces, other countries, and the three parishes together, not just our two black parishes, but the other parishes in the Hispanic. So there's some signs of you know growth and enrichment because it's the broader passionist family, not just like the American passionist that are aiding one another. And that's a real enriching experience for all of us, I think. But looking forward to the future, I guess it's just more of an opening, opening to others, o opening to others on a more regular basis to engage in that prayer and that sharing together and a support of each other. So, that's why I see going forward is just being open to having others be a part of, let me see, my prayer life, my, my faith sharing, my, you know, just my uh, spiritual growth, whatever you want to call it, or just my understanding as a passionist. It's just opening to others that way. Why haven't I invited some passionist family members, not just the lay, but the lay and devout at the same time? <laughs> over to dinner uh, at my house. Uh, if we can have it at the monastery, we can have it at my house. And we do more faith sharing if we take 10 minutes out of that dinner we have at my house to talk about the charism or whatever, or the passionist way, then relationally we can each do this. One of the things I find very supportive is the fact that we have a lady as part of our province board and even you know the prayer forms and reflections from other people besides the Val passionists have really been impactful for me because initially we weren't sure about laity being involved and I think the first meeting they were sharing how the passionists had impacted their life and just like the video the other day whether it's Sebi or any of us others you know the charism and the hospitality and the openness uh, shared on that that level were even though you're vowed or not vowed, but still it's a basic charism that's part of our faith. And so to hear that perspective for me is very enriching. I think every family and community has certain traditions. And um, I remember when I was invited to come to that mass that's on the Friday before Lent starts. And I thought, what is this? You know, I, I forget what it's called. What is this? And then I was invited to come to some other stuff and I thought, Oh, they're inviting me to come into their traditions. You know, I also think that in a family, in a, in a community, new traditions come. People uh, make new traditions and new um, uh, ways, customs, ways of doing things. I think that when you are really a part of something, you are also part of its trajectory of its growth. So we're not just, I guess what I'm trying to say is we're not here to help father and we're not here to help the old people. And we're not here to bring this to some kind of conclusion. There is a future. And um, that's what I find exciting. A common future. But one thing is very much alive is ministry. Uh, that, that has kept me alive. It's kept me in touch. And I think um, that that solid commitment that we all share uh, with the passion of spirituality is important. Almost all of the reflections from the guys, the vowed guys today, have been about 
but the, the investment that you have to make in local communities and being present, being able to listen and to support one another, uh, leading us to understand that presence and the whole ascetic around being present to each other is one of the essentials of community life as passionists. But it, I'm curious to hear what tomorrow's group is going to say. Uh, when you gather the, the kind of the lay folks, the essential element I suspect is not going to be presence because there's that's not what connects them. It's going to be charism. This is really all about the charism and 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 for the future uh, the the continuous propagation of the charism and and that is obviously does involve lay people now and it's going to involve a lot more. And I think what we're trying to figure out now is you know what is our What's our relationship with the with the vowed? What's our relationship with each other? It's more than us just showing up to a chapter meeting and not being able and having a in quotes vote, but not not a real vote, you know. So we're sort of still the stepchildren in that in that respect. And that's not a criticism, that's just a, a canonical fact at the moment. We are a passionist family, but we've got discrete families within that area. So there's there's certain parts of the vow that, that, you know, don't go here. And there's certain part of, of the lay that don't go here, you know, because should I invite these people over for supper? Is that appropriate or not? You know, all of those sorts of things, like the rules of engagement um, are, are changing on us. We can't force feed this by just setting up another autocratic or an, a bunch of more committees and layers to do this, because that doesn't get into your soul in the same way the, the spiritual change does. I think one of the things that 21st century is teaching all of us in all communities is that the male dominated hierarchies that we are we take so much for granted aren't working. We need just to be learn to be together. The, the idea that it's the charism that bonds us all together, I think is key because once you have that shared charism, we're implicitly saying nobody's a stranger here. You know, families have a family story, a family history, communities do, and so do passionists. And I think what's happening now, there's a transition in how we're telling that story because uh, there's more there's more characters to the story. So, and, and you know, we're all sharing the passionist story, but we're we're telling it in different ways. The first assembly that I attended, I think was in 2013 in Detroit. And I had just become a new board member and I was invited to come. And there was a group of men there from um, India. And at that assembly, I'm gonna try and say this without crying because I'm visualizing it. They turned over the province to, to make it a vice province. And a lot of the men that had served in India, the, the American men, um, put their hands on these young Indian men and blessed them. And I just thought it was so generative. And, um, and there was no pride in it. It was just, this is what we do. I don't hear a lot of touting, you know, like, oh, we got Thomas Berry, we got Carol Stu Miller, you know. I don't hear that, but there is a richness of, of the, the legacy of a lot of these men and what they've done that I would like to know more about, you know? And I was really glad at the assembly that um, we got to meet some of them. It seems to me that, um, that the charism is not something that you can learn or own or um, study enough to become uh, very familiar with it, but that it's something that, that you live. So I think you don't really know the charism until you experience something in your life where the charism touches you. But when my son was diagnosed, I, everything I knew was no longer true. I, I'm a cancer survivor myself three times, but when it's your child, it's a different experience. And 
the passionist priest said to me, Mary, when you touch the wood of the cradle or the crib, you touch the wood of the cross. When you touch the wood of the cross, you touch the wood of the crib, the cradle. That was just words at that time, but I so understand. I have shared that with so many parents because we, we don't suffer alone. That's the beauty of the charism. We are in it together. Today, I was so excited about receiving your invitation to be part of this call because I'm away from my community that supported me and my family that just kept me sheltered. And I'm in a new place and I'm still grieving. The loss of being able to drive out to Christ the King and sit at the grotto and gaze on the statue of Mary and say, she suffered too. She's a mother, she suffered. I'm suffering, but we know the cross is the joy and the suffering. How do I take those things that changed me and share them? with others. And I think this is such an exciting time for the passionists and the charisma. Our world is hurting. It's, it's deconstructing in front of us in so many ways. And yet the other side of that is we have an opportunity to create the emerging church, the new church, because and, and I taught entrepreneurship at the university in one of my careers and creative destruction is what we taught. And I, I think about that and I think our gospel, the good news of the gospel is creative destruction. I'm starting a class this weekend on <laughs> lamentations. And so I've been sitting with that material and it's all about the destruction and yet people had hope and I, I think the parent passionists have so much to offer and me in little Texas with it's a different world out here from California trust me <laughs> I'm finding it out um, but I have a place in that I, I have a responsibility and a right to carry what I learned from the passionists into my new community that is it's it's the charism that holds people who are not involved, living in bond community uh, together that is the unifying factor, uh, which makes me think that, you know, as we, in the future, as, as, as several have been saying, we need to find some way to blend the, the two experiences of community, the, the, the VOD experience and the, and the lay. And I think what's going to happen is that those of us who live in VOD communities have to discover and and relish the charismatic connection that we have, the faith connection that we have with one another. The physical presence is, is important, but the other essential element is the faith connection that we have with one another. And we have to provide for the pe people who have a charismatic connection, some kind of physical presence to bring it together. Some kind, so our, uh, some kind of a new experience of passionist community life is going to involve for us vowed men a deeper in, uh, experience of the charism and for the lay folks uh, more opportunities for physical presence and sharing. Hey, thank you for allowing me to partake and listen. Um, I found the listening to be just you know delightful. Um, what, what I heard is that our voice changes over time. Uh, and, and the message that we receive from the foot of the cross changes over time. And um, I think that's one of the greatest gifts that I take away from, you know, this past hour with each of you. Um, we're all looking for the same thing, but as the chapters in our life continually change, as new pages are written and new chapters open, our journey changes. And I think one of the biggest gifts that we can give to our broad passionist community is the understanding that we're here for the long term, we're here for the journey, and that we want to continue to walk 
and learn as these new chapters are uh, are created. And I'm very I'm very grateful for that. I mean, extremely grateful for that. Thank you all for the love that you share uh, for this passion, for the passion that we all proclaim. It's an evolution, and I, I believe in the Holy Spirit. I believe in miracles. Uh, we'll see what happens. Loving God, as Jesus rose from the dead on Easter morning, you transform the evil of the execution of an innocent person into the act of our salvation. Continue to transform us. Open our hearts and minds to live in hope and anticipation as you lead us into the future. Amen. You are asked to identify new lifestyles and new forms of language in order to proclaim the love of the crucified one, thus giving witness to the heart of your identity. The implementation of your missionary calling will require a sincere effort of inner renewal on your part, which derives from your personal relationship with the crucified risen one.